好，欢迎来到《活在五点》的嘉宾访谈环节。那么今天我们要讲一讲这个啊、呃，在高中生来到加拿大，尤其是这个海外留学生、小留学生来到加拿大之后呢，啊、呃，参加 ESL 课程的一些问题。因为很多的家长啊啊、呃，他们在帮助孩子选高中的时候，发现这个高中没有 ESL 课程，那么他们就会去选择一些其他的一些 E 呃 ESL 的学校，那么帮助小孩子呃。尽快的融入加拿大，尤其是我们安省的这种学习的环境。那么其实呢，可能很多的家长不知道，在我们安省啊，很多的公立学校自己也是有 ESL 课程。那么今天我们非常高兴啊，请到了我们两位嘉宾。第一位呢，叫做 Michael Crowley， 呃，是我们之前已经请到过的一位嘉宾，他是来自 Ajax 的啊、呃、高中的。啊，英文老师，那么同时也是一位作家。那么另外一位呢，是现在是大四的学生 ，Crystal 现在是大四的学生。那么啊，来到我们的这个节目，给我们讲一讲啊，小留学生来到加拿大之后，进入高中之后呢，啊 ，E E S L 课程对他们是有多大的帮助？那么同时呢，这个小留学生在学习英文或者说是融入这个我们加拿大的文化的时候，所面对的一些挑战是什么？ So welcome to our show, guys. Thank you very much.、Um, so first question、uh, for Michael, like,、uh, could you give、uh, our parents some information, like general information about the、um, ESL system in our public school system? Sure.、Um, ESL stands for English as a Second Language, and、um, the Canadian government and Ontario, we're in Ontario now,、uh, have set up specific courses of study to help students、um, integrate culturally. Um, to understand the literature and and for all the different subjects, we we do a lot of reading and writing. So it's made specifically for students, international. 嗯，那么刚才啊、uh, ，Michael 跟我们讲呢，这个 E E S L 这三个字母代表什么？代表 English as second language， 就是英语作为第二语言。那么小留学生来到加拿大之后呢，可能他们自己本身有一些这个英文的基础，但是在加拿大学习的时候，他们如何能够很快地融入加拿大的课堂的环境呢？就需要这个课程的帮助。那么安省呢，在这一方面呢，有非常啊、呃、详细的一些安排和规划，帮助我们高中的啊、呃，尤其是从海外留学过来的这些学生们呢，尽快地融入学习的环境。OK， so、uh, when they're attending ESL classes, like how do we put them in different levels? How do we test them? Well, each school board, each school. Um, will have a different um, assessments.、Mm -hmm. they, they make up their own tests and、uh, they run them that way. Now,、um, there's five levels.、Um, ESL AO is the beginning. It goes A B C D E, or、mm -hmm. you can count it like number one, two, three, four, five.、Mm -hmm. And in the five levels, there's four strands: reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And then、um, the, the special tests are set up, and the students would come in and. Um, write the tests or perform the, the different tests, and then they、um, will be set up、uh, accordingly into what level they are. 嗯，那刚才呢，我问了呃、uh, Michael 一个问题，就是说，在学生参加 ESL 的时候，学校怎么可以知道把他们放在什么样的 level 里面，让他们进入什么样的难度的等级去学习呢 ？Michael 说呢，其实 ESL 有五等。啊、呃，不同的一二三四五不同的难度的班次，那么学生在进学校的时候，学学校会进行啊、呃、一些这个测试来测试，看他们学生的这个程度在什么地方，会把他们放进不同的这个 level 去学习。那么在考试的时候，有听说读写四门，那么学校都要进行一个综合的评估，那么以这个来判定学生。啊、uh, ，要升级或者是待在他们原来的级别，或者是已经啊、uh, 可以已经啊、uh, 准备就绪，可以进入高中了。那么在这样的一个这个考试的系统下呢，可以保证学生呃、uh, 得到一个比较公平的评估，让他们能够尽快的进入学校去学习。So Crystal, I have a question for you. Like you have lots of、uh, um, foreign students as your friends, right? Like what what what、uh, do you think ESL classes are necessary for them? Um, in a perfect world. Uh, yes,、mm -hmm. just because ideally an ESL class would be able to teach students English、mm -hmm. as well as acclimate them to the culture.、Mm -hmm. um, for example, there's a lot of cultural nuances、mm -hmm. um, that textbooks will not teach you, like English textbooks will not be able to teach you.、Mm -hmm. There's certain phrases, for example, that are a bit 
if you only knew English from a textbook, you wouldn't really understand what they mean. Mm -hmm. For example, piece of cake, uh, mm -hmm. a dime a dozen, mm -hmm. um, things like that, by the skin like of their slang. teeth. Yeah, like slang, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and there's also, e even in regular, like in school, mm -hmm. for example, I had a friend who, in his English class, he wrote an essay using some ideas that were Chinese in culture. And the teacher, because she was not, um, she wasn't trained to be to deal with international students. Mm -hmm. She didn't really quite understand um, what he was trying to get across mm -hmm. with his points. Mm -hmm. So even though the essay was well written, it was he didn't receive too great of a mark just mm -hmm. because he didn't really understand the culture of North America. So if you're able to take ESL. Um, that ESL classes might be able to help you get used to the culture and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's also what you make of it. If you don't try to learn as much as you can from ESL, then you, it might not be as helpful for you as it is for other students. Okay. So, do you have any like advices for your um, for like the newcomers, like for their ESL class? Um, my only advice would be. Well, because I'm not an ESL student myself, mm -hmm. um, it would just be to make the most of the class. Try to ask your teacher a lot of questions, mm -hmm. um, and try to watch English television. Try to watch English movies. Try to make English friends. That's the biggest thing because mm -hmm. I find a lot of um, international students will stay within their own community. Mm -hmm. um, they'll try to find other international students from like the same country, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, that that would be my biggest advice, I think. Actually, Michael, you mentioned before our interview that uh, in ESL classes, students speak like 70% of the time, like for students to speak. But in regular class in our public school, like high school, it would be teacher speaking 70% <coughs> of the time in class, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. In a regular classroom, um, there's usually up to 30 students, mm -hmm. English-speaking students, mm -hmm. um, doing the curriculum. So the teacher has uh, much, uh, a very limited time to focus on individual students. Mm -hmm. But in an ESL classroom, um, oftentimes there's only, for example, say 10 students. Mm -hmm. And they have, they're, they're encouraged to speak. And, and it's speaking and listening and reading and writing are mm -hmm. the strands that they're, they're pushed on. And a lot of students are very good at um, for example, reading and things, but they don't understand what the whole sentence means. Um, but yeah, in the ESL class, they can express themselves a lot more. 嗯，那刚才呢 ，Crystal 跟我们讲了一下这个，他之前有一个朋友呢，啊、呃，这样的经历，就是因为啊、呃，那那个朋友他是从中国大陆可能是来到加拿大来学习，那么很快就进入了普通的班级来学习，没有啊、呃、过多的接触 ESL 课程，那么他在写他的作文的时候呢，就很难表达清楚自己的啊、呃、这个要表达的东西，那么他可能引用了一些中国的一些典故啊，一些文化上面的东西，但是可能他的老师作为一个加拿大人不是非常的了。了解，那么又加上他没有过多的来进行这个解释，那么老师就给他分数不是很高。那 Crystal 的这个意见呢，就是说其实呢 ，ESL 它虽然叫做英语作为第二语言教学的这个课程，它其实更多的教授学生的是一种文化上面的一些如何融入的一些啊方式，以及你在。呃，英语教学的班级里面如何去进行学习，如何去进行理解？所以很多的家长都觉得说，啊、呃，那我参加了这个，我的孩子参加了 ESL 是一种浪费时间，那么是在耽误他们的时间，是在浪费我的钱。其实并不是这样。那刚才 Michael 也在给我们讲过，说这个 ESL 的课程的这个班里面啊，其实是学生。七十百分之七十的时间都是学生在说，那百分之三十的时间呢是老师在说。但是如果是啊、呃，我们普通的高中学校，不管是在加拿大还是在中国，都是老师在讲，学生在听。那么其实他们自己的这个练习的时间就非常的少了。那其实呢，作为这个啊、呃、家长来说呢，还是希望孩子可以尽快的融入这边的环境，而不是说只是吸收知识。所以 ESL 的这个课程看起来还是非常的这个重要的哈。那好 ，Michael 啊、um,。What, what's your advice for the students to attend ESL uh, class? The one thing everyone should realize, um, as much as all teachers try their best mm -hmm. with students, whether they're from um, North America, Canada, or from an international um, country, they try their best. However, 
many teachers are not trained um, how to help um, English as second language um, students. ESL teachers are specifically trained for that and I really, it, it really encourage everyone to um, take ESL classes even if you decide not to and you're in the regular um, classes doing your best um, visit your ESL teachers. Um, they have less students, they know what your problems are, they're, they're there to really help the international students. Mm. So, Michael's meaning is that in the English language, in the English language, in the ESL language, is a help to children very quickly to enter the learning environment. 啊，我们安省的很多的学校其实都是在啊非常认真、非常细致的安排这样的课程，那么尽量的能够满足啊外来的学生、外国的学生，不是讲英语的学生，能够尽快的让他们能够赶上本地学生的一个进程。所以 ，ESL 的课程是非常的重要的。那么，啊，如果收音机前的家长朋友们，您在考虑要不要让自己的小孩参加这种英语语言教学的这个课程的时候，大家一定要慎重，因为如果您强行的把自己的小孩放到了一个普通。的啊，我们这种 local 的高中的课程里面，那很可能第一，他由于不懂文化，会啊遭到来自可能呃同学的一些陌生的眼光啊，一些啊嘲笑也好，还是怎么样也好，都会对自己的孩子心理呢造成一定的打击。那么同时，在学习上面的一个呃赶不上同学呢，也会给他们的心理造成打击。所以呢，作为一个能够帮助他们在自信心还有这个能力上的一个促进呢 ，ESL 的课程还是非常重要的。那么今天非常感谢两位这个嘉宾来到我们的这个节目当中。那么啊，也是希望呢，这个电视机前的。家长朋友们，通过我们的节目呢，能够获得更多有用的资讯。So thank you very much for coming to our show. Thank you very much for having us. 好，那么我们今天的活在五点节目呢，就先到这里，我们下一期节目再见。